Hey guys, Boy here, and today we will talk about five things you might not know about Draw Ranger. Draw Ranger is a hero I made a video about a couple of weeks ago. The hero has really high win rates in high MMR games, but it's not a hero that shows up as often as one would expect with that win rate. And why is that? Well, the greatest reason are picks. Some meta heroes at the moment are really good versus Drow. Nice Stalker and Sin King come to mind as really strong offlaners that are also gap closers. And when you can ban those heroes, or when your team has those heroes, or when you know that the enemy didn't pick them, Drow starts to become a better alternative. If you look at the games where high MMR players lost with Drow, at least those that are on display on Dota 2 Pro Tracker, you can see a clear pattern. Waga in this game, for instance, play Drow versus Void, Sand King and Akanka, a lot of huge cast range spells and gap closing heroes in the same team, resulting in a loss. In this other game, the new carry from VP, Epileptic Kid, play Drow vs. Batrider, Earthspirit and Anti-Mage. Sometimes, Hammer players first pick heroes just to test their strength, and I think that was probably the case here. Drow was third picked, giving Dire more than enough time to react and build a good draft against it. What you can take away from these losses is that this hero is good, yes, but it's not a gyrocopter. You don't first pick this hero, and if you're not last picking Drow, make sure your lane is decent enough, because even though this hero can recover quite well, you still need at least level 6 to start crawling your way back into the game. And in this game, Burning starts 0 and 3, yet they win the game. What can we learn about itemizing the hero to win not only this game, but any draw game? The first thing I think we can use from this Burning replay is the fact that he is 0 and 3, yet has a Yasha before Hurricane Pike. Draw players in general opt for Pike when they feel scared, when they don't feel they are owning the game. While that's the path Burning is going for, Yasha is his first item, and the reason for it is that Drow is good because she farms fast. And in fact, she farms so fast that the thing holding her back is move speed. She already one-shots camps, so the time walking from camp to camp is way bigger than the time killing creeps, and that's why Yasha is core on her. If we go back in the replay, we can see something even more eye-opening. While most Drows that have terrible games just max 4 Wraith Bands with Trads and either Yasha or Dragonlance as their first items, Burning gives up on one band for a Windlace that he replaces later with his 4 Staff. This is a really cool thing you can do with the hero, allowing you to crawl yourself from bad laning stages by just farming really fast, pushing waves really fast, going back to camps. In general, choosing between either Dragonlance or Yasha is a personal thing, but Yasha is the greedier farming item, while Dragonlance gives you better team fight, more tankiness. A change that I mentioned in my last Drow video that maybe wasn't expanded enough is the changes to marksmanship. Now that you deal one damage instance that adds the damage you proc from your ult, data loss and crit in general becomes way more desirable than the hearing before. Burning was also 15k gold behind in this game, but his choice of items against the Radiant Heroes was Daedalus. If you don't think Daedalus is good, just watch this footage. Drow and Lifestealer are dead even in farm, when suddenly a Lifestealer just shows up. A Lifestealer with Radiance, Evasion Talon, and MKB gets shredded by the Drow DPS. Well, the first thing to talk about here is that you never miss with your ult, so you actually don't care that much about the evasion from the Lifestealer as long as you're far away from him. Now, Lifestealer is a hero that builds armor outside of his own, with items like Face Boots and Assault Caress, Armlet sometimes, but that's not true for Templar Assassin and Agility Heroes in general. TA has 16 armor, 2000 HP in this game, but all of it is base armor, which means that when you crit and you proc your marksmanship at the same time, burning just 2 shots TA. We can see the same thing in another draw game, where Dendi is against a Phantom Assassin. Most heroes, when they play against PA, have to go MKB, but that's not what Illidan does. You see, marksmanship cannot miss. PA is a similar hero to TA, where most of her items give no armor whatsoever. The problem, though, is that your ult requires that no enemies are close enough to you. You're not going to be able to do that all the time against the PA. But even still, they win the fight just because of how big draw is, and usually you're big just because you farm so much, and we already talked about farming early in the video. Well, what if I told you that Basher can sometimes be good on this hero as well? The problem Drow can have sometimes is lack of control. 
While you won with the hero, you quickly burst them, but as the game unfolds, a bunch of items in the game prevents Drow from killing the enemies or chasing the enemies. BKB makes your slow and silence don't work, for instance. After the enemies become big enough, they're also able to TP away when you go at them, and most cars will not die in the two seconds that takes for them to TP away. Basher is there as a tool to fight BKBs, making your chasing power better, but the secret of it all is timing the item with the level 25 power spike. Not only at this stage you have enough attack speed that your bashes start to become relevant, since the cooldown of the bash drops by half. Mushi turns around a 15k gold lead game against the Radiant team and Basher was the item he chose for this game. Side of Ice is probably an item you thought about as control and that also synergizes with your cooldown reduction, but besides the fact that it costs almost double the price of a Basher, Basher can also be upgraded to become an Abyssal Blade. While the range is short, the build he went for gives him plenty of mobility, allowing Drow to deal with BKBs and magic immunity. Also, a problem that you can have with Drow against a lot of gap closers is that you can never get away from anyone so that your ult works. And Basher can sometimes stun those heroes enough so that you can force staff and then start attacking them as they are far away, thus slowing them down and also bashing, they cannot get close to you and you get kills. Guys, thank you a lot for liking, commenting and subscribing. As you can see, we are attempting to start uploading videos 7 times a day in this channel and also get 3 bonus videos on Patreon every week. This is a really hard task for me right now because I'm the one uploading, editing, translating everything and also not playing a lot of Dota and getting yelled at my comments when I post videos of me playing. But you know, I don't care. Uh, the idea here is that we get to 100 Patreons so I can hire an editor and make things more sustainable for everyone. For now, for now, that's what I can do, and I really apologize if I don't answer your tweet or DM on Patreon. It's really sad when I, you know, just feel like I'm not giving enough for you guys, but it's also incredibly time-consuming for me. That being said, you're awesome, keep doing your best, have a good one, bye.